Hello everyone! Hey guys! And welcome to an extra special episode of... Massey Art, Art Studios. Studios! I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. Also known as the Resina. Because I'm the one that tends to do most of it. Yeah, I know you don't, you don't like getting your hands sticky, so I, I mean, yeah. So why would he? <laughs> this episode is here by popular demand. A lot of you have yeah. asked to see an episode specifically about how we resin our pieces. Yes. Because you've seen some of them on the channel and you see how great results we get. I did an episode, especially for the Patreons, mm -hmm. months and months ago, that they get to see because they are Patreons, and it was an exclusive episode for those guys. But I know you guys wanted to see something too. So, I'm gonna teach you in this episode everything that you might need to know for how to resin a piece of art that you have poured. That's going to be from prep, to mixing, to applying, yep. and then even to fixing a piece that might have some imperfections in it yes, too. Yes, and I help out too. Absolutely, you always help out. <laughs> yeah, it is, this is going to be a collaboration for an art <laughs> resin piece. Um, so, why don't you sit back and watch exactly how I resin my art. Grab that notepad. Let's do it. Well, hello, ladles and jelly spoons. And as you just heard in the little intro there, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time today not painting a canvas, but reddening a canvas. Something that you guys have asked us to show you a few times, actually. And, um, and so I thought I'd take some time because I'm about to resin this canvas to go through my steps. Okay, so here's the caveat. This is how I do it. There's only one thing that is a must do, and that's follow the instructions of the actual resin company on how you mix the resins together. Everything else is a culmination of trial and error for me, watching other people do this resin, and kind of just seeing what works best for me personally. So this is how I resin. I'm not saying to you that this is how you must resin, and there are other artists out there that have resin videos too. Go check them out. But um, this is how I do it, and I tend to get a fairly decent finish most of the time. So, what you can see on the table and the things that you're gonna need here to do this are your resin, clearly. I personally prefer, and we're not an affiliate of in any way, but I really love art resin. It is absolutely one of the most expensive, but it doesn't have an odor, it's really easy to mix, and the bubbles are really easy to get out of it. So it's just the, the one that I choose. Um, when you buy art resin, you get two bottles in the kit. Um, one of them is the resin itself, and then the other one is the hardener. And you'll mix those two together in a certain quantity in order to then produce the resin that you'll oh. pour on your piece. Okay, so they come separate, so you have to mix them together to get the resin. Absolutely, pour. yeah. It's okay. this plus this makes the chemical reaction of it hardening on top of your canvas. Okay. Yeah, and you'll be asking, well, how do I know how much resin to use? Well, I'll show you that when we get to it in just a second. Okay. So that's my resin. Then the other things that I definitely like to do or to have, first off, this is my canvas that I'm gonna resin today. It is still backed with tape and it still has its push pins in it from when I painted it. But as you can see, I've sprayed this with water. This is a 16 by 16 inch gallery wrapped canvas. And what I want is the surface of this canvas to be as taut and straight as possible because I don't want there to be any dips or lips or reasons why the resin will pool in the center of this canvas and then give us a nasty edge. So sprayed the back of this one with water already. Then I've got a timer because I'm going to be mixing my resins together for five minutes. Now you can do that on your iPhone, whatever you want, watch the clock. I like a little timer. I've got my scale to measure out, to measure out my resins. I've got my torch, some popsicle sticks, <clears throat> excuse me, some rubber gloves and a plastic pot. This is my water that I use to spray the back of the canvas. And this huge thing here, which you won't be able to see all of right now, but I'll show you when we finish this canvas, is a net. I resin in the garage just like the same place where we paint. And so it is not a clean environment by any means. The door is currently open and if flies land in your resin, they'll get stuck there. If you get hair particles and dust in it, and it'll get stuck there. So you really, really do need this to be nice and uh, uh, clean, as clean as you can get it, 
So we put a net over our pieces to stop the heebie-jeebies getting in. And that really works. It seems to for us, yeah, we don't have too much of a problem with it. Now I am missing one thing. And this is what I'm missing. Okay, so the first step in my resin journey is to clean this canvas. Now, um, this one has been sitting here for four weeks. It is definitely cured and it's ready to have the resin on it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some isopropyl alcohol, spray it onto some kitchen towel, and then I'm gonna wipe the surface and the sides of this canvas to make sure that all the dust that's collected on this whilst it's been sitting, or any of the greasy fingers that have been touching this in the time that it's been sitting are all wiped off. Now I said that this has been sitting for four weeks and, and I would then say that that is cured. What does cured mean? Well, what you really need before you apply a resin coat onto any of your acrylic pieces is the piece to be fully dry. If you apply a coat of resin before it's fully dry, then it can have the opportunity to mold underneath the resin because the moisture gets trapped and then it will create mold, which no one wants when they're paying your big bucks for your pieces of art. So um, you just need to make sure that your piece is cured. For an acrylic piece on a canvas like this, I tend to leave mine for three to four weeks. Again, check out the competition, go look on the internet, see how long it takes for your pieces to dry and to cure. Some people will do it less than three weeks, some people will do it more, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so that is my piece now, fully cleaned off, isopropyl alcohol on it so there's no grease on here, because we don't want any grease on top of the canvas, otherwise that'll interact with the resin and it won't cure properly. So next, let's get mixing. Now I have one set of gloves on already, but for any resin work, I double glove. And why do I do that? Well, one set of gloves just doesn't seem to be enough to keep the, like, the stickiness off your fingers. And if anyone has used resin out there, you will know that resin is sticky. So I double glove. It also means that once I finish playing with my resin, which you'll see in a minute, I can take one set of gloves off and I've still got another set underneath it. So it kind of just is easy for me. Um, so Jeremy, let's get to talking about measuring the volumes. How do I know how much resin to mix for my piece of art? This is a 16 by 16 inch gallery wrapped canvas. The easiest way for me to do this, and thankfully Art Resin helps me out, is by going to the Art Resin calculator on their website, which I'm going to show you right here. And as you can see on the Art Resin calculator, there's an opportunity to put in the length and the width of the canvas, and then it will tell me exactly the total volume of product that I need. And total volume meaning that half of that weight has to be in resin and half of it has to be in hardener. So as you can see here, it says nine ounces. So I'm gonna do four ounces of resin and four ounces of hardener. All right, Jeremy, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I know that this cup will hold 16 ounces. So it's gonna go onto my weighing scale and I'm gonna tear it down. So that it thinks that this is now a zero weight. So it doesn't matter which way around you do this, I don't believe. So I'm gonna take my resin first. And as you saw, I need nine ounces in total. So it would be four and a half ounces of each of these things. So I gotta go a little carefully because I don't want to go overboard. So if you need nine ounces total, you need four and a half ounces out of that jug and four and a half ounces out of the other jug. Absolutely. That, and that makes nine ounces. That's exactly right. Because it's these two products together that are gonna to mix together that are gonna cause a chemical reaction in this product that are gonna make it hard fast. And that's gonna be the science. resin, the resin coat science. that I need. It is science. All right, 4.55 is close enough. So that is, that is good to go. So that is our resin. Next in here, we want our hardener. Now, some people will pour these into two separate cups. Why will they do that? Well, because if you over pour into this pot, 
then you've got too much content and you've screwed up this pot. However, I've done this so many times, I am comfortable now putting my hardener straight into my resin. Okay. If this is the first time that you're doing this, I would suggest that you get two cups, four and a half in one, four and a half in the other, so you know you got it right, and then mix those two cups together. Got it. Does that make sense? It does. Because if you accidentally go to five in one of the cups, then you can either pour back into your jug, or you can just pour five of the other product. Got it. Yeah? yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, however, I'm pretty confident and comfortable that I have done this a few times, so now I'm looking to take this up to nine. Watch me now mess this up. You got it. Okay, I was being very precise there. I could go all the way up to 9.1 because there was 4.55 in the previous, but a few point ounces of, of resin is not gonna make any difference in the grand scheme of things. So now you can see that I've got my nine ounces of resin and hardener in my jug. All right, show pony. Now we've got our nine ounces of product in our cup. I'm now gonna mix this for a full five minutes. Ah, not six minutes. Let's do that again. Five minutes. Yes. Are we good? good? Okay, I'm gonna start this now. All right, so what I'm trying to do here by mixing these two products together in this cup is start the chemical reaction, okay? So what I am doing constantly is scraping the sides of this cup. What I don't wanna do is leave any of the resin or the hardener that is not mixed together in this cup. And you can see that I am quite vigorously mixing these two products together, okay? There are bubbles appearing in this pot. Bubbles are absolutely unavoidable when you're mixing these two products together. If you mix this together and you don't get bubbles, I would say that it's probably not mixed properly. So you're gonna, or it's unavoidable. The bubbles that you're gonna get in this pot of resin here, you will absolutely get. However, we are going to disperse of these bubbles as we pour this onto our canvas by using the torch to pop those air bubbles on top of the canvas. So um, you clearly don't wanna whip it too much, but you absolutely need to mix these two products together. It would be more detrimental to you, in fact, not to mix them properly and to pour it on top of the canvas because it wouldn't set in places yeah. than it is to actually just get a crap ton of bubbles in this pot and then just use a torch just to pop them, you know? So my philosophy here is whip this thing up to your heart's content, you will absolutely get bubbles, but do not stress about them. Well, that was a workout. All right, Chauvoni, that is my resin mixed. Now, the one thing that I didn't say to you guys before I started to mix my resin was this, that different resin manufacturers are going to have different, different recipes for how to mix the resin. Mm -hmm. So our resins is half and half, 50% of one product, 50% of the other product. But there are other companies out there that might be one and a half of one to one of the other. Or, um, you know, there's, there's a million different ways that you can mix these products together. So I am using Art Resin. That is exactly the recipe that they suggest that you use. But please, please, please follow the instructions on the back of your resin tubs. Some of them you don't need to mix for five minutes. Some of them you might need to put in water. Some of them you might need to mix for longer. And when I say put them in water, you put the jugs in hot water to kind of heat the resin before you mix. Um, so there's a million different ways you can do this. This is just the way that I mix this for art resin. So here we have now our mixed product. The work time for this is about 45 minutes. So we have so long to get this from here onto the actual canvas. It is a very long time. 
So we are not rushing. We don't need to worry about this hardening before we start to get it covered all the way through the canvas. Okay, so this is what I do next. So first off, I'm gonna clean off the stick. I'm gonna make sure that everything is nicely mixed. And you can see that there are a lot of bubbles in this pot, but we will take care of those. Do not stress about them. So I then take a bead of resin all the way around each edge because I'm gonna use that bead to push it down the edges of my canvas and then the rest of it goes on top. And I'm gonna keep a little bit left in the pot and we are not gonna scrape out the edges, okay? The reason why we don't scrape it is if there was any of either of the product left on the side of the cup, it's then gonna interact with everything that we've got on the canvas here and then may not officially set. All right. Now, I don't take my edges because I like the resin to fall over all sides of the canvas, especially when the gallery wrapped. So the next thing I do is take my gloved hand and I am going to gently make the resin that I put, the beads of resin that I put all the way around the side, make this gently fall over the edges. So I'm going to push this resin all the way to the edge of the canvas. And as I come back side down this side to show Pony, you're gonna see that resin just fall over the edge of the canvas right here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna to get to mixing, or should I say spreading the resin all through the middle. So I do this with my hands because what is easier for me personally is to feel the resin on the canvas. What's really awesome about resin is it's, it is super sticky, but it's also very slippery and slidey. So you can actually feel if the canvas has not got resin on top of it. And that's really evident when we start to cover the sides. So now that there is nothing exposed on the top side of this canvas, I'm now gonna take my gloved hand that has some resin on it, and I'm gonna wipe the sides. And I can feel, because my hand just glides gently all the way down from one side to the other, that that has a thin coat of resin on it. Mm. Show Pony, can you see that? I can. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention at the beginning of this process was that I also took some time with a level to make sure that the canvas in fact was level. Because what I don't want to do is go to all this effort and then to have all the resin slip off one side of the canvas because it wasn't straight. So um, I took a level and made sure that the push pins that were sitting inside the canvas actually were keeping it nice and straight. So I'm taking my hand, rubbing it all the way across the sides. And where I, where I come across resistance, I know that then that means that there isn't resin there. So I can just dip my hands in the top, a bit of the resin at the top and then take that across the side. And I'm doing this on all sides, making sure that the resin is dispersed across all the edges. And including the actual edges. Now that tape that we had on the back of the canvas is gonna help me keep a really nice finish because we're gonna peel that off. And I'll show you that part of the process when this one is dry. But what resin does to your acrylic pieces is it just brings them back to life again. Um, I don't know if you can already see, oh, yeah. but the colors on this canvas are just now popping just because of this beautiful resin coat that we've got. So I'm just making sure that all these edges are covered and they are, every single edge is covered. Now I'm gonna take my popsicle stick that I use to mix and I'm just gonna first off clean up my edges like you do when you pour your acrylic pours. It's even more important now, because if we don't get these edges nice and clean, the drips will continue to pull your resin from the top. And what you'll end up is with a big pool of resin on the table and no resin on top of your canvas. So we're gonna do this a few times, but that is our first pass. Now I'm gonna remove one of my gloves. So I've just taken off my glove on my right hand, because next it's time to torch. Now you guys will have one of these, but as you well know, I have one of these. So I'm going to first do a pass with the torch. I 
across the top of the canvas. Now, what did I just do? Well, the flame did not touch the resin and I've basically kind of waved the flame, the heat over the top of the resin in order to pop all the bubbles. Now, I'm gonna take my popsicle stick, wipe down these edges again. And the next thing I'm gonna do is check this all over for bubbles. And you'll end up having to do this a few times. How do we check it? Well, you have to get down into the canvas. There's gonna be various angles where you're gonna be able to look at the canvas to see if there are any bubbles sitting within. Or you can actually take a light, like the light from your phone, and you can actually shine that light on top of the canvas. And that'll help you see if there are any bubbles that you've missed. And what the beauty of 24 karat gold is, look, I don't know if you can see that as I'm shining on here. There's a ton of sparkles in this. All this gold that we put in this piece for our dear friends, nursery, super excited for them to receive this one. But actually that single pass with the torch, I think got about 99% of the bubbles. There's a couple that I can see. So I'm just gonna go over this one more time. But even though there was a ton of bubbles that you saw in the pot when I was mixing it up, by using your hand and by using the torch, we're gonna get rid of them. One of the great things about resin is it's a self-leveling product. So, you know, this is going to become nice and straight on top of this canvas, just as it sits. And um, as long as you've got all of your edges covered and you've popped out every single air bubble, I can promise you that this is gonna be stunning. Um, so I'm just taking a look down the sides of the canvas. I can't see any more bubbles on here at all. I don't see any bubbles either. But there may well be, you know, I'm going to show you what we do to take care of this for at least the next 10 minutes. So it's gonna sit here on my table and I'm gonna take my net and I'm gonna cover this one off. Now this net was a gift from Kathleen at Cos Creations. It's actually like a picnic hamper net that you can get to protect your food. And it's gonna go right over the top of the canvas. Now, you haven't got a great view of this, but what this is doing is protecting it from all the heebie-jeebies, the dust, anything that might be sitting out in the air that's gonna land in it and cause imperfections in top of my resin. But for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna keep coming back. I'm gonna keep removing this. I'm gonna go around the edges with my popsicle stick because what I really wanna do is keep as much of the resin on top of this canvas as I can. But I'm gonna do it quick because the more times you remove this, the more times you've got, the more chances you've got of things flying into your composition, but I am gonna do it. So it's been five minutes. So I'm gonna remove the cover real quickly. I'm gonna take my craft stick again, go around my edges. By doing this, I'm getting rid of anything that's gonna pull the resin off the top of the piece and I'm gonna check for bubbles real quick. So there might be now more bubbles that have appeared as a result of it just sitting. And what I'm gonna do is torch them. And now I'm gonna cover it again and come back in five minutes time. Okay, another five minutes has passed. This is my third pass. And the last time I'm gonna be uncovering this piece, I'm gonna get my popsicle stick I'm gonna go around the edges real quick. Get your edges. Get me edges. Because I want all of this resin to sit on top of this piece. I don't want any of it coming down. I can see that all my edges are looking great so far and I'm gonna to torch this the very last time. So there you have it folks. Now this is gonna go under the net and it's gonna sit there for at least 24 hours until that this resin hardens beautifully on top of this canvas. So I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do next, tomorrow. All right, ladles and jelly spoons, what have I got in front of me here? Well, this is a canvas that has had a coat of resin applied to it. 
as you can see it's looking shiny and beautiful the edges are great the sides of this canvas are, have come out perfect there's no kind of thin edges but donna beasley won this one in our latest auction and there's a little dimple right there you can kind of see it on camera actually if i catch it in the light a dimple i missed it even though i'd been going over this one three times with that bloody torch i didn't even see it so what am i gonna do i've got nice beautiful piece here with a great layer of resin how do i fix it well, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. And if you don't know this piece, I think this is probably the reason why most people are so scared to use resin, because they think, well, what if I mess up a really beautiful canvas, <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't you think? Oh yeah. So I wanna show you that it's absolutely fixable. This resin is super durable and there's an absolute crazy thing you can do to it. And it is this take a piece of sandpaper now this is wet or dry this is p220 so i think that means that it's actually not super super coarse yeah. it's nice and and kind of you know it's, it's, a, fine. it's a fine grit or yes. gr whatever it is the gravel that sits on this sandpaper and i'm going to take this and watch what i'm going to do oh my gosh like, I, if I didn't know that this was gonna be okay, I would think that I'm absolutely crazy doing this. I'm taking a piece of sandpaper, I am scratching the surface of this resin. Now I'm scratching it all over, and I'm paying extra attention to this little area here that's got this little bubble and divot in it. What I'm paying extra attention to do is not sand too much of this off, because I don't want to reach the canvas underneath it, but I am sanding a layer of this resin off the top. There you go. Now look at that. Scratched to buggery, we would say in England. And it is. It's got basically scratches all across the top of it. And again, if you didn't know that this was possible, you would probably sit there and think, what in the heck am I doing? Well, now I'm going to take my kitchen roll, paper towel, and I'm gonna take my alcohol and I'm gonna get rid of all of the dust that I've just created on the top of this canvas, making sure to get everything out of that little divot that was on here. So this is gonna get rid of all the dust that was on top of this canvas because we need this completely dust free and free of any contaminants anything that's sitting on top of this canvas. And at this point, I'm not gonna to touch it because I don't even want the oils that are on my fingers to get on top of this canvas either. So I'm cleaning out this little hole here as much as physically possible. And I'm now gonna spray this one on the back. Now this has a coat of resin on it. So um, I'm not exactly sure how much this is gonna help me tighten up the back of the piece, but I'm just gonna do it anyway, just to make sure. So this is now, as you can probably hear, squeaky clean, squeaky clean. Now, this is a 20 by 20 inch gallery wrapped canvas. If I put the figures into the resin art calculator to cover this piece with a beautifully thick layer of resin, I'm probably gonna need something around 14, 12, 13, 14 ounces of resin but I'm not gonna cover this the same way that I would do if it was just my first coat. All I really need is just enough to cover the top, cover the edges, and just to fill in that divot. Yes. So I'm gonna do half, if not even less than what it's gonna ask me to mix up if this was my first resin coat. So I'm just gonna jump onto the resin art calculator right now and see what it says. So it's a 20 by 20 inch gallery wrapped canvas. It says 14 ounces on my little lap here. So you're so going to use seven ounces? I'm going to use seven ounces, exactly that. Now, Show Pony, I'm going to mix it in exactly the same way that you saw me do it previously. So I'm not going to get you to film this. I'm just going to mix this one up and you'll be back when I got seven ounces of resin in my cup. All right, with absolute help from the Show Pony there, because I was knackered after mixing up the last one, we're now going to pour this seven ounces of resin on top of the canvas in exactly the same way because the aim here is to cover all of this canvas so we're going to go around the edges first and then the rest of it's going to go in the middle i'm going to leave a little bit left in the cup and i'm not going to scrape the edges so now just as we did previously 
using my gloved hand, which has got two gloves on it. I'm gonna first make sure that the top is covered and then we're gonna drag this resin down the sides of the canvas to get everything covered. Now, I don't know if you can see this already, but that hole, that divot, has already been filled in and I can't even see it. I couldn't even tell you where it was previously. When you re-resin a canvas, you're gonna take real special attention to the lip of your canvas because you wanna make sure that there's nothing that's bare in this at all. Now, the first time I resined it, this had 14 ounces of resin. The second time, it's only got seven. Now, when you say the lip, you, you're actually meaning the edge here. The right? lip, yeah, the lip of your canvas. Yeah, the edge of your canvas, exactly that. So I'm just making sure that everything is covered. Now I'm gonna run my hand again down the edges of the canvas. If I'm feeling resistance in any way, then I know that it's not fully covered. And I can just run my hand across the top of the canvas to collect some resin and then just wipe it along the edges. So awesome. Yeah, you know, this is self-leveling. It's a self-leveling product. So as much as I play with this on the top, as it sits and as I let this one cure, just like the canvas did in the first place, then it's gonna come back to level. Now there's only seven ounces of resin on top of this canvas, so it's not gonna have as much resin on here as the first time, because it had double the amount of resin. So you don't have a lot to play with. There's not gonna be a lot of waste. The more resin you put on a canvas, the heavier it's gonna be. And if you're gonna ship these things, you don't want it to be, you know, super heavy. Right. But my edges are now completely covered. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just making sure, like I said, that the lip of the canvas is covered, that there's, no gonna, there's gonna be no exposed edges. Just running my finger across them and then just making sure that everything is covered across the top. I think one of the reasons why people are scared about resin, like I said earlier, was because they are worried of messing up a really beautiful piece of art. But I'm hoping what, what this is showing you is that resin is absolutely tactile and pliable and malleable and if you make mistakes you can come back and fix them um, and what resin will absolutely do is give you a wonderful finish on your pieces it's basically like you know what you see in galleries um, it's just shiny beautiful I love a resin coat on a canvas all right so I've scraped my edges as best as I can now let's torch this one off But the wonderful Donna Beasley was thinking, where the blooming heck is my canvas? Because she's the one that won this on our giveaway not that long ago on the channel. Well, here it is, Donna. It's getting its second coat of resin just to make sure that this one is perfect for you. So wonderful, Donna. This one is going to sit for at least another 24 hours to cure. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fix the back of this one. And this one will be winging its way to you very, very soon. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you fix a canvas that might have scratches, bubbles, pop marks, even hairs and fluff in it. Take that piece of sandpaper, sand it down, and then just apply another thin coat of resin. This is gonna now sit under a net for five minutes. I'm gonna scrape the edges. Then it's gonna sit under the net for another five minutes, and I'll scrape the edges again. And then it's gonna sit for 24 hours just to cure. All right, guys, we'll see you when these are done. All right, cut to one sleep 24 hours, if not a little bit more later. This canvas is now completely cured and pretty beautiful, I have to say. I can't wait to show you <laughs> the other side of this canvas, but right now you're gonna see the dirty side. And what you can see here is, first off, the tape that we use to back the canvas. And now it's even more apparent why we're gonna use it. Yeah. Well, it's because we're clearly, what you can also see is all these little um, nubbins. nubbins. Yeah, people will call them all sorts of things, but we're gonna call them nubbins. And uh, this is where the paint has dripped down the canvas. And even though I scraped it three times, there's still little drip marks. How would you get rid of these? Well, again, there are a million ways. Different artists will tell you different ways to, to get rid of these little nubbins. 
Um, you can use tools even to get rid of the nubbin. But this is what I find is the easiest way to do this. This time I'm taking my little creme brulee torch, my little chef's torch. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna heat the resin along the strip of tape to make it soft. And then as I peel the tape off, a big portion of these little nubbins are gonna come off. Now it won't do every one of them, it just doesn't. But I'm gonna show you what I mean and I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I'm gonna start my little torch. This one's got a little button to stop it for me. And I'm gonna heat the resin along the edge of the tape. Now, one thing I didn't talk about in the actual video was safety um, when you're using resin. Um, you will be told to use a respirator. This is a chemical. It is a product that you don't want to be breathing in, getting in your lungs. We resin in our garage, not in our home. You wanna be in a very well ventilated place. Okay, now I'm just gonna peel this resin, sorry, this tape off the top of this canvas. And hopefully you can see there, all those little nubbins just came off with it. So I'm gonna do this on all sides. So yeah, I was just saying, we are doing this in an extremely well ventilated space. It's pretty much like doing it outside. Well, yeah, because the garage door is open. It so. is, and we're in the garage. This is not in the house in any way. There's no one gonna be breathing in these fumes as this sits on the actual table. No one is, you know, in this area. But please, please, please read the instructions, go onto the internet, you know, do what you need to do in order to be safe when you're using resin products. Under no circumstances am I telling you that you should be using resin products in exactly the same way that I am. My disclaimer here, people, is this, that you use resin as safely as you need to use it. If you need to wear a respirator, then you wear a respirator. And I would probably say that 99% of you guys out there should, because I'm guessing I'm guessing that the majority of you out there are not doing this in the outdoors. You're probably doing this in bedrooms or, you know, somewhere within the comfort of your own home. Well, please, please, please be really, really careful about how you work with, breathe in and play with resin. Now, I'm hoping that you can see just how easy this is coming off. This was taped particularly well. Thank you, Show Pony, who tapes all the backs of all of our canvases but just by heating this really gently and trying not to burn the tape like I just did, what this is doing then is allowing me just to peel off the resin just like that. So now what I've got is a beautifully smooth, somewhat clean on the back piece. This is as clean as I'm gonna get it anyway, that's for sure. What we will now do is stamp this with our stamp that says Massey Art Studio. Oh. We sign it with a Sharpie, because we're not worried about anything going through to the side because it's got resin on it, and we'll date it. And then what we'll do is wrap it in glassine, which is a product that protects the front of the pieces, that this, so that there's nothing that's gonna impact on the resin. Yes. And then we'll wrap it in bubble wrap with the bubbles facing out. You do not want the bubbles facing to the actual body, the face of the canvas. Yeah, you don't want the bubbles touching the canvas. You do not want the bubbles touching the canvas, and you, yeah, you don't want them facing the canvas because the bubbles can also have a chemical reaction both with the acrylic and with the, with the resin, and you'll see little like divots in your painting. So please always, if you are gonna wrap in bubble wrap, wrap it the opposite way with the bubbles facing out. Yeah. Um, but do consider glassine as a, as a product you know, you can use freezer paper, all sorts of stuff, but do protect the, the front of your canvas before you send it. And, uh, and then we'll put it in a box with corners, put business cards in it, and send it out to the people that usually buy our pieces. Yes. Do you want to see the front of this? Absolutely. Well, here you go. Guys, this was a really, really beautiful resin. I'm so pleased because this is going to someone very, very special. But hopefully you can see here, no hair particles, no dust, no nothing in this piece that's gonna have any kind of, you know, distraction away from the beautiful composition. And you can't see it on camera, but I can tell you this 24 karat gold just catches the light and just sparkles and shimmers. So that, people, is how we resin a piece.
I hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much, guys. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments box. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. Lots and lots and lots of information. Please feel free to keep going backwards and forwards and taking tons of notes. There's a lot here for you to see. Yeah, a lot right? to learn. Um, but number one priority over everything is be safe. Yes. If you need to wear a respirator, if you're doing this in the confines of an unwell ventilated space, but we suggest that you're in a well ventilated space, that you wear gloves, that you protect the surfaces and you do everything that you should do when you're using and handling resin to make sure that you are safe. We will not be held responsible for anything that you do incorrectly or going against any manufacturer's instructions. <laughs> so please also read the back of those jugs as well, just to make sure you're following everything that you should be. Now let's show you both of these cured pieces yes this is the one that i poured first time around now you will see glare all over this because it's impossible not to but just look how beautiful that resin coat is get it a little closer it's on the sides it's on the front it's on the back it's beautiful and what you That's will gorgeous. never see on camera with these is that 24 hour 24 karat gold blinging because it blings all the way through it yeah now this is going to be put in a frame and this is going to be winging itself all the way with its pal yeah. to the Netherlands. It sure is. Uh -huh, for some very special peoples. And Jeremy, show us Donna's piece. Yes. Donna Beasley, I'm so sorry that this has taken so long, but when I got that little divot in the piece, I knew I wanted to go back and correct it yeah. for you. But this was a swipe that I did. Stunning colors. Yeah, it's so pretty. Those blues and that gold just like right. pop so much. And it's so hard to get a good angle because I'm like, there, right. there's the other part of the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mirror. It is, it's like a mirror. But I can but tell so you, nice. there is not one single hair or dust yeah. particle on this piece. Donna, I hope you're gonna love this one. She won this in a super chat, super sticker giveaway. I know. On one of our anniversary episodes. Yeah. So that one's gonna be coming to you very shortly. Thank you so very much for watching. If you stuck all the way through this 45 minutes of our episode, thank you for being here. Um, if you have comments, please throw them into the comments box. Yes. Jeremy and I will answer them for you. Um, that's it, guys. Yeah. Uh, normal episode on Tuesday where we'll be throwing some paint on the canvas. And, um, and we'll see you there. You all have right. a great weekend. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Have fun. Be safe. And we'll see you back on the channel very soon. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm gonna take a moment to spank, spank. There <laughs> <laughs> spank some very special. <laughs> <laughs>we want to take a moment to thank some very special people absolutely and that's our patreons so the patreon account is a very separate account from youtube mm -hmm. but it allows some very important people the opportunity to get a little bit of a closer look of the studio and there are certain levels so at one level for example you get to see sneak peeks and behind the scenes videos mm -hmm. at another level you're invited to join us in a WhatsApp group where we chat, we exchange pictures, and you also get weekly painting challenges. In another level, you get um, once a month live streams. At another level, you get once a month tutorials that are live. Yes. And then at our top tier, the diamond level, you would get to pick the colors and the technique for an episode of Massey Art Studios. Mm -hmm. And then you get to keep one of the 11 by 14 inch canvases every single month. And so, with a change of venue... What? I know. <laughs> we've got some very special people that we have to thank. Yes. And that is our gold Massey Posse. That's Trisha West, Jane Klein, Stephanie Hancock, Donna Patterson, Terry Leshner, Gloria Salaki, it's Nate Bright, it's Linda Serien, Crafty Chicken Mom, it's Rebecca Hawes Winters, Patsy Petrilli, it's Tammy Houdsbrook, it's Kelly Stowell, and it's Gillian Barnett. Now with the platinum level, it's Leslie Beaver, Janice and Steve Pittman, Donna Panis, Dana Foxley, Elaine Burton, Susan Shepperson, and Robin Koza. And you all know her, we all love her. At the diamond <laughs> level, there's only one person, yes. and that is Sparkles. Sparkles. 
So to you guys and to everyone else that, whose names that you'll see here listed below, thank you so very much. We yes. absolutely love that you're here with us on this journey and we're gonna keep pouring. Yes. Thank you guys. Bye guys.